and uh, to be shedding more light on uh, tennis in general, tennis in Egypt, and more specifically on the latest piece of news coming from uh, Australia. <coughs> Dr. Khalid Farou on the phone, uh, the specialist and the expert in tennis. Dr. Khalid, thank you very much for being with us once again on Sprint on the phone. Thank you, Ahmed. Always a pleasure uh, having me. The pleasure is all mine. Dr. Khalid speaking uh, firstly of uh, the Australian Open, and I think that this will be uh, the first Grand Slam of uh, the upcoming season. Am I wrong? Yes, it's the first gra Grand Slam. But they said it will be starting on the 8th of uh, February. How do you see um, the late change or the change uh, happening in the scheduling of the games in Australia now? It's been a, lo a long debate uh, since this um, last month because it was supposed to start in January. It's the first time in 15 years, uh, yes. uh, more than 20 years, to have uh, the Australian Open start in February. We were involved in this in Egypt, uh, especially in Ahli Club, because, you know, Mayar Sharif, our top Egyptian player, was supposed to play the Australian Open. And, uh, you know, because of the quarantine, she had to travel like 15 days earlier, and this is going to contradict with her... Uh, uh, Egyptian league matches here in Egypt where she's playing right now and helping our national, uh, Ahli team to play in the semi-finals tomorrow. And eventually the Australian Open was postponed to the benefit of uh, everyone in Egypt. That's why Mayor is here currently and it's a very good chance for all fans to come and watch her play uh, starting from tomorrow, in uh, day after tomorrow actually in Taufaya playing the semi-finals and finals of the Egyptian uh, final league matches. Regarding the Australian Open, yes. the decision was uh, finally took to postpone the start of the tournament with putting the qualifying, as you uh, said, uh, for the men in Doha and the uh, women in uh, Dubai to decrease the number of participants because there were a lot of voices in Australia talking about allowing um, the athletes to come to Australia during the lockdown, especially with the, the strict quarantine rules that uh, Australia is taking Actually, they're now, uh, if you're an Australian and you're outside Australia, you're not allowed to come back. And mm -hmm. if you're in Australia, you can't leave. And at the same time, they allow the athletes to come. And that's why many uh, voices were complaining about this. And that's why there was a debate between the, doing the, the event and pushing the economy and, uh, and promoting everything to come back to normal. And... Uh, Treating, uh, uh, giving special treatment to athletes rather than uh, treating all the same. And I think that the, the solution that they found eventually is a very good one. And everybody is happy that things are like 50% back to normal with allowing fans to come back. And they decided to use the, the same bubble scenario that they did in the US Open, putting all the, what they call the Australian Open series, not only the Australian Open event, in one place in Melbourne Park where they're going to play the ATP uh, famous ATP Cup, 12-team ATP Cup at the same time. Of course, the players are going to arrive and uh, spend uh, two weeks before the start of the tournament in quarantine to make sure that they were uh, uh, applying their, uh, the regulations of the COVID-19. And they have uh, minor events going on with the Australian Open during the time they stay there, which is promoting most of the top players to come. And uh, luckily, they raised the... the the prize money, the total package is going gonna, gonna to be like $72 million. The, the good news is they are giving the loser of the first round $100,000, which is a 15% increase than last year, which is very good news for all the players. They are promoting all the players to come and helping the, the players in the lower ranks where they suffered more from the, the, the lockdown and the long, decrease in the number of tournaments. We are yes. all looking forward to a very good start of the, the season. Yes, uh, Dr. Khalid, speaking of uh, the aspects of economy for the Australian Open and all the Grand Slams, as we have uh, been talking, me and you, during the year and during uh, the COVID-19 measures and postponing Grand Slams and cancelling Grand Slams and playing Grand Slams uh, behind closed doors with no fans uh, whatsoever. Speaking on uh, the economic aspect of the Australian Open, starting on the 8th of February. Do you think that the COVID-19 measures will be decreasing the income, decreasing the money that will be flowing uh, into the Grand Slam in Australia? Or, as you said, the prize money will be going up, so they are expecting more and more money to be coming in 
uh, through the tournament? Usually the, the Grand Slam, the Australian Open event produces around $250 million in uh, net profit every year. It's yes. a huge event for Australia and uh, Melbourne region or Victoria region for, for Australia. And now with the many segments of the society are suffering from the lockdown, they are using it in a political way to promote the, the business and the economy and the, the sense of well-being of the, of the people telling them that we're coming back. Uh, they're promoting the local coaches, the business, the artists, the everything. They're trying to use it in a very good way because they have opposition saying that we don't need to do a tournament like this. We don't need to invite people with the risk of having a spreading infection here because Australia is an island, as you know, and it's very easy to lock it down and protect it from uh, infections from uh, outside sources. But the, the Australian Open is not only a tennis event in, in Victoria or Australia. It's a huge event. It's a yearly event, one of the biggest events in the, in the world. And it's going to be a pity if they cancel it, and that's why they decided that was to do it with these strict measures. Yes, on the other hand, those strict measures, how they would be affecting the big players, do you think that this, this is a chance it is presenting itself for the younger players, for the next gen or the next generation to be coming out and saying that this is our chance um, Federer he will be having a hard time to be coping with the bubble that they are creating in Australia Rafa Nadal Novak Djokovic we did see um, even Djokovic breaking down in previous Grand Slams during uh, 2020 during the times of the coronavirus pandemic how do you see um, this tournament as there is a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic but there is a bubble there are strict measures that were taken to be having this tournament in the first place how do you see the situation of the big players coming into the uh, grand slam the first grand slam of 2021 the situation now <coughs> reminds me of the start of the Australian open as a grand slam that very far away from the, the the action it's not in europe it's not in the states and before most of the top players, they didn't take the, the burden of traveling. They, it, it was very difficult to travel. Yes. And that's why it wasn't the, the, the biggest Grand Slam. It wasn't that famous. And they have, they have been doing a lot to promote this. And mm. now it's like history is uh, coming back again. Now they're trying with the very difficult situation of traveling to, to push people to come back to Australia. And another aspect is the Australian players themselves. We haven't seen, for example, Ash Barty, the four, number one in the world. She, she didn't play anything. Uh, Kyrgyz is not there. Most of the Australian athletes are not traveling a lot mm. because of the lockdown and the restrictions on traveling and the quarantine. And Australia is not only it's a sport nation. They admire sport. They uh, cherish sports, especially tennis. When I was there, uh, the country was... Uh, covering that every, everything was to have the tone of tennis and everything was tennis, talking tennis in those two weeks and the weeks before building to the event and after it. And um, actually everyone has to deal with the situation now. It, 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 you can't stop playing tennis for two years now. The top players, um, I think they have to come back and that's why they took the decision to eventually mm -hmm. go ahead and do the tournament. Yes, to be having at least 50% of uh, the fans <coughs> during the tournament, how do you see this? Um, as important for, as I said in the beginning, the big players, because I think that the big players have the bigger portions of fans. The, the Australian Open daily is, was expecting like 70,000 people to attend the venue. 70,000, yes. that's a huge crowd. When, when we were there, they were giving us strict instructions how to move between the courts, and when the courts are a little bit far away with the crowd, you can like take like more than 20 minutes to go to your court, and they have underground club cars uh, traveling, uh, transferring the players. It's a huge crowd. And now they are minimizing it to 50%. You're talking about 30,000 people every day are expected to come, which is not, um, which is not uh, a small crowd by any means. But probably they're going to be mainly Australians because the restrictions on the flights, as you know, the players are going to trans to travel from Doha and, uh, and Dubai by special charter flights. To, to make sure that uh, everything is under control. But still, they are saying that we have been working for the last eight months to prepare the venue and how to handle the crowd. 
and it's going to be a real test for big events like the Olympics and others. How can we handle big events like big sports events like this in these times? Yes, uh, Dr. Khalid Faru, the uh, sports analyst and the expert in tennis. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on Sprint. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. Anytime.